NASA and SpaceX made history this weekend. Astronaut Doug Hurley and Bob Binken successfully launched into orbit on Saturday from Kennedy Space Center in Florida. They are the first Americans to be sent into space from American soil in nine years. What an exciting launch, right? On Sunday, the two docked onto the International Space Station where they will spend their mission. Joining us this morning uh, is our space cadet. Paul, Dr. Paul Sutter, an astrophysicist at Stony Brook University and the Flatiron Institute in New York City. Let's talk about this historic space news. What does this mean for our space program now that we successfully launched uh, from American soil? What was the purpose of this launch and then for the future? Right. This uh, launch was so cool for so many reasons. One of the reasons, like you mentioned, is it's the first launch in nine years from American soil, which means going forward, NASA has a lot more flexibility, a lot more options when it comes to launches that we didn't have before. Second, this was the first launch from a private space company launching humans into flight. This is from SpaceX. So once again, we have private investment, private companies trying to to get people up into space, which is super cool. And lastly, they used a reusable rocket. So instead of throwing the rocket away when it's all done, the rocket's going to be returned and used again, which makes everything so much cheaper. Yeah, so high tech. It was really cool to see that first stage come down and land on that platform. Pretty cool. Um, you know, really high tech. It was like flying an iPhone. There was, you know, no joystick or anything. Uh, so what are our missions going to be like in the future? Right. A lot of this, this mission actually was entirely robotic or could have been robotic. The astronauts did take over sometimes just to make sure that manual controls could work and respond correctly, but they didn't have to. The entire mission from the launch to the docking could have been handled entirely by computers, which means future astronauts are just going to be along for the ride. All right. So let's talk about where we go from here, because isn't SpaceX, SpaceX part of the whole Artemis program getting to the moon and then eventually onto Mars? Right. NASA has a big umbrella program called Artemis, which is designed to send people back to the moon with the eventual goal of sending people on to Mars. The NASA is developing its own rocket and capsule, the space launch system, that will be in parallel to the efforts of SpaceX. <clears throat> excuse me. And they will work together to make access to space cheaper, more reliable, more regular, more boring so that we can have enough missions to get to the moon and eventually Mars. Yeah, and get a, a woman on the moon as well. I know they found a little bit That's of water. Right. What does that mean for, you know, the program itself? Right. We're starting to find more and more evidence for water ice on the moon, which means if we want humans to hang around the moon, water is a kind of a nice thing to have, even if it's frozen. And that will be an ideal location for yeah. a lunar base. Dr. Sutter, you have a new book. I don't I, I, I mean, we're just launched off. We're saying how to die in space. What kind of a title is that? What is this about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's right. My new book comes out tomorrow. It's a nationwide release. It'll be in bookstores and online retailers everywhere. It's called How to Die in Space. And it's it's about how to die in space that if you want to journey through space and see all the cool astrophysical phenomena, it turns out it's not exactly a pleasant journey. All right, uh, Dr. Sutter, we appreciate you. We're all amped up. Come on, Sutter. We got to stay on this high that we're all on uh, with this launch. Uh, <laughs> astrophysicist with Stony Brook University at the Flatiron Institute in New York City.